This is such an awesome question. It's, it's hard and it's scary, but maybe from experience, I know kind of going in that this is just going to be a follow instructions question. It's, it's literally like if you ever completed a Lego set or built Ikea furniture, this is the math equivalent of that. It, it, it just literally just do what they say. Don't worry about why the, the screw goes here. Or this piece goes there. Just trust it's all going to work out. So you could read the whole thing and then go through, but let's just take it step by step. For an electric field passing through a flat surface perpendicular to it, the electric flux of the electric field through the surface is the product of the electric field's strength and the area of the surface. Okay. Let's not get complicated in the science. I have no idea what that means, but I do know what a product is, right? So product means multiply and uh, is means equals. So what do we really have? The flux is the product of the strength and the area. Okay, fine. Let me just write that down. The flux is the product of the strength and the area. That's literally all I got out of that, that sentence. I have no idea if that's true. I have no idea what a flux is. I don't care. I just am following instructions and I'm trusting that in the end, I'm going to have a nice uh, Lego pirate ship or an Ikea bookcase. It's going to work out. So then we continue. A certain flat surface consists of two adjacent squares where the side length in meters of the larger square is three times the side length in meters of the smaller square. So, okay, fine. I'm just going to draw two squares. There's one. There's a smaller square. One is X, one is three X. That's all I really get from that, right? So uh, I, I'd love to not have the X, but three times the length is as good as I can do for now. So we'll worry about that later. Maybe I can make up the X. Maybe they're gonna give it to me. I don't know. Let's just, let's just wait on it, right? Um, continuing. An electric field with strength 29 volts per meter passes uniformly through the surface, which is perpendicular to the electric field. Okay, so strength of 29 volts, why don't we just put that right here? I'm probably gonna wanna put that in my formula. So, okay, the strength is 29. So that's just a, that's just a value, right? That's literally a long sentence telling me to probably plug in for S. Uh, if the total electric flux of the electric field through the surface is 4,640 volt meters, okay, so again, this is just, 4,640 is the flux. Uh, what is the electric flux in volts meters of the electric field through the larger square? So, okay, fine. So this is, this is mysterious. I don't know what that's all about, but I'm going to trust the process, right? What do I have here? I have a formula, an equation with two values, and I could just do basic algebra solve for the third, right? So let's just, let's just divide by 29. Let's see what that gets me, right? So regular calculator here. 4640 divided by 29. Okay, the area is 160. All right, now I'm stuck. But okay, well, I have these two squares, right? So the area of these squares is 160. Well, what could that mean? Well, okay, maybe this is where I have to use the x's. I could maybe try to guess what the value of x is, uh, but I could also just create a formula, right? So the area of the small square is x squared, right? Because it's gonna be x times x. The area of the big square is nine x squared because it's three x times three x, right? So I'm just using basic geometry here, how to find the area of a square, the area of a rectangle, right? So that you need to know, that's given in the reference chart if you don't, but it's, it's just pretty simple. And the reason I'm doing that is because I can do that. They're talking about area, I have squares, why not? Let's see what happens. Okay, so if the area is 160 and there's two squares, let's add them together. X squared plus 9X squared is 160. Okay, 10X squared is 160. Okay, X squared is 16. So that means X is four. Well, that worked out super nicely. So that, that gives me some confidence, right? And, and I didn't know it was gonna do that, but it certainly helps that it did, right? Now, what do I have? Well. I have some, some measurements, right? So the area of the small square is 16 because it's a four by four. The area of the big square then is 12 by 12. Well, what did they want again, right? They wanted the area, the, the something about the big square, right? Um, da, 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 what is the electric flux of the electric field through the larger square? Okay, so let's go back to this formula, right? The flux is equal to the strength times the area. Well, they want the flux, right? So I know that that's gonna be a variable. That, that means in order to use this formula again, I need to have been given the strength and the area. 
Well, the area, I feel like I just figured it out, right? I mean, they, I, I just found the value of that X. So I know that the, 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 the big square here is a 12 by 12. So 12 by 12 is 144. So, okay. So the strength, I don't know yet, but 144 is the area. Now, this is where a lot of people are going to freak out, but it's actually really obvious what to do. We know we need the strength. We've read everything in the question. Did they give us the strength? Well, they did a long time ago, right? It was the 29. Now, you might be thinking, but how do I know the strength is the same? Honestly, you don't, but what else are you going to do, right? You have no other options here. And it kind of makes sense, I guess, if this, the field is just like existing in space, then it doesn't matter where we are standing in the field, right? It's gonna have the same strength. I guess, like the square, the big square, the little square, the field is still gonna have the same strength. But that's me guessing. I don't really care. I wouldn't even do this on the test. I would just be like, okay, I need a strength. I've only got one number for it. Let me put it in. And now, okay, what is, what is the flux? It's 29 times 144. Get the calculator again. And that's 4,176. So for lack of anything better to do, I would put that answer in and move on. And it's the right answer because there's nothing else to have done here, right? So this is exactly what I meant at the beginning about how this is really just about following instructions. I had no idea about the big plan of this question when I started reading it, when I started solving it. I was just like, okay, step one is pretty easy. They gave me a formula, F equals SA. They gave me two numbers for that formula. Let me solve for the third because I can. And because you can is a really good reason to do a lot of stuff on some of these hard twisted questions. It's just like, do what, what makes sense given the information you have. You don't need to kind of like worry, well, what if that's not the right thing? Well, if it's not, then doing it will reveal that, right? But you have to do it. I always think that you're better off trying it and then letting it fail sometimes rather than always being worried about whether it's gonna fail and never trying anything. This is true about a question like this where we have just like instructions to follow, but it's also true in a big picture sense about when should we plug points into equations? When should we arithmetize? When should we use Desmos? Just do it, just do it and see what happens. And the worst thing that happens is it fails. And as you do this in practice, you will get better and better at knowing when you should use these different strategies, when you should use these different ideas. And then on the real test, you'll have a better sense of what's gonna be the most efficient. But for now, this is a great question for so many people because it really just forces you to have some trust in the system and work your way through. And on the, honestly, at the end of the day, what do we really need to do to solve this thing? We need to read, but we also need to do multiply, divide. The hardest part was maybe building this equation for the area of the, the two shapes together, but it was basic geometry, right? So nothing here is individually very hard. It's just that everyone's gonna be intimidated into quitting, but make sure you don't do that. If you save this for last, that's okay. But if you have time, you really wanna to try to get through this. Just trust that any long math question is mostly just gonna be about following instructions.